Well, hello YouTube. Hope everyone's doing good. I'm still trying to uh, get over this head cold of mine, and uh, I think it's just about there, but it's still still lingering on. So it's going to be a while probably before I get fully over this. I am feeling much better. Uh, another good thing is I have heat in the shop for the first time now in a month. Uh, I've tried running a uh, propane heater in here and it's just loud and makes so much noise. It's just hard to record videos with that thing running. Plus I won't feel that well, you know, and being out here and it's cold, not that good to you. Anyway, uh, thanks to support of Patreon, I um, went out and found another Yezu FT-101. This is the E version, and it also came with the digital display, the YC-601, and it also has the original cable for it. So, uh, got a good deal on it. A friend of mine had it, had it stored for a long time out in the garage. That was uh, environmentally controlled, so it wasn't just sitting out in moisture. This one does have the uh, plastic on the front. It is yellowed a little bit. Get some light on that. You can see the plastic is yellowed a little bit, but uh, radio looks good, and it's got most of the screws in it. Now, he did tell me that the uh, display did not work. So, I've got a video I'm uploading over on Patreon where we went through and did some troubleshooting on the display and found out what the problem was, so I have parts ordered for that. Uh, if you like to see that, you can go over on Patreon, it'll be up there. But, uh, you know, I've been trying to collect anything that's uh, Yezu FT-101 series. Uh, still looking for two more rigs. Now I do have another E, but the radio is in bad shape. It's got a lot of corrosion on the chassis. It might end up being a parts rig. I'm not sure yet, but this one will take its place. But uh, I'm still looking for the plain 101 and the 101B, and that will complete the FT-101 um, series of radios that they made. I uh, missed out on a 101B not long ago. Come to find out a local had one and he uh, sold it off and unfortunately it became a parts rig. So I kind of hated that but you know that's how it goes sometimes. Um, a lot of these things are bought and stripped down piece by piece and sold on eBay. But uh, yeah I, I missed that one. I hated it but that's how it goes. Anyway, uh, I'm still looking for those. And uh, I have three of the FL-101 transmitters. And I do not have a receiver yet. I am still looking for an FR-101. They are getting hard to find. And when you do find them, they have a big price tag sticker on them. So, <laughs> yeah, they are going crazy on that. Anyway, what I basically wanted to do is he said the radio, when it was put in storage, was working. Uh, he bought it out. He tried it. It did not work. So we want to check it out, find out just what's going on with it. See what it's got to take to just get this thing back up and running. Okay, I got an antenna connected. I've got it set to uh, 20 meters. Everything else looks okay. We'll turn the power on. And I'm already hearing signals. That's the, that's the audio is wide open. We do hear signals. No movement on the S meter. Okay, the signal is there, but everything is way down. 
So the first thing we want to do is turn on our marker generator. We don't even have to use the signal generator to check this out. So I got the marker generator on. We'll turn the volume back up. And you see with the tone, the S meter is not moving. So that tells me that the receiver is down. There's something in here causing an issue with the receiver being down. Alright, let's try something else. I'm going to see if I can find a station that's pre-selected as working. I think that band switch is very dirty. Not hearing any stations at all. Alright, we'll get the covers off up so we can get a better look at what's going on. Alright, I took the top cover off and I went ahead and take taking the bottom cover off and we want to get behind this plate. So I'll remove all these screws and we'll take this plate off. Okay, I'm taking out the uh, last screw. And then we can slide this plate out. And make sure you do this with the power disconnected. There's a lot of voltages in here that you can short out and cause some uh, problems if you're not careful. And when I'm looking in here, the first thing I see is the brown wire has been cut. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, those of you that know, know why the brown wire is cut. Now we can see our band switch goes all the way through here. And it changes to different sections of the receiver. And then back here on the end, it changes the cores for the uh, transmitter. So what I want to do is go through here and just clean all these wafer switches with some deoxid so that we can rule out any problems in this band switch. Okay, I went ahead and cleaned the whole band switch and the mode switch and uh, when you hit the volume control everything that was down here below that I could get to right easy. And I am hearing some faint stations in there again. So another real quick check to find out if anything else in the receiver path is bad. If we go right here, you can see the antenna jack coming in and there's the wire from the antenna jack. Also we can see the receiver uh, phono port on the back and here's the wire for that so what we're going to do is take as a jumper wire and we're going to clip onto the antenna lead and then we're going to clip onto this RCA connector Take it off, you see it. Receiver drops down. Okay, we'll turn that off. Now that even tells me that uh, the fuse lamp 
is bad or dirty or the relay is dirty. So what we're going to do now is remove the uh, cover from the fuse lamp. That was in there pretty tight. Cut that out and we'll see if we can get the uh, lamp itself out. And there it is. I'm not seeing no tarnish or corrosion on it. It looks pretty clean. I have to get in there with the uh, dyno light and look in there and make sure that the uh, terminals inside are not corroded up. The lamps looks good, but just to check to make sure. Yep, no problems with the lamp. Okay, I got a lamp fuse reinstalled. So next, what we want to do is get in here and have a look at this relay. Now, make sure when you do this, you have no power applied to this radio. If you don't, you're going to have a very bad day. So to get in here, we'll need to, uh, usually you remove three screws. I see one of them's already been removed. So someone in the past did not reinstall the screw. So we'll take these two out. And this cover will come right off. I'm just doing a visual inside the uh, PA compartment just to verify I see no arced out places or anything that's burnt or you know out of the ordinary making sure that the 6JS6s are in place and nothing shortened on them all that looks good so you should be able to see our relay right here that's the relay that we need to take out again make sure there's no uh, no voltage you can go to the anode to discharge any caps so over top of this relay is a spring clip that you'll need to pop off and there it's down now I'm just using a, uh, a hook pick and I should be able to work this relay right out of here and there it is so the relay's up out of the socket so I can just reach down here and uh, get it and pull it out okay that's our original relay now you got two clips on each side we should be able to pop this right out with a little small screwdriver and then pull this case right off well the first thing you want to do is inspect the relay leaves and make sure they're not bent and causing any issues and they seem to appear to be in pretty good shape so let's see how they do look So what I'm going to do is pull this spring off the top that keeps the uh, relay in the correct position. And when you do this, be very careful before the spring doesn't go flying off and uh, you'll lose it because it is small. 
have a spring off now we should be able to lift out and pull these contacts right out So guys, there's a close-up of our contacts, and you can see just how black they are. A little bit of copper shining through the center of this, but you can see the whole thing is black. If I turn the light off, you can see it a little bit better on just how black this one is. You can see just a little copper on it. So that's our receive problem. And if you look back here on the uh, second set of contacts on the fixed terminal, you can see that contact pad and that one is black also. Now that's the back of that movable contact and you can see how black they are completely arced over and you know that's when it goes into the transmit mode. Okay so uh, all I got to do is clean up these contacts on the uh, movable arms and then clean up the uh, contacts on the fixed things now do not use sandpaper or files I know a lot of people back in the old days use a burnishing tool well that's just a mild foul uh, it's better off to spray these with deoxid and clean them with paper uh, paper is enough you know enough abrasive in a paper that it will clean it with no problem so guys all I do is I put the relay back in I take a strip of paper and fold it over soak it in deoxid and then put it between the contacts and run it back and forth and I keep doing that and keep changing out the paper until there's no more dirt on the paper uh, you'll see the black streaks on the uh, paper when you first start then grab another sheet of paper and fold it and spray it and keep doing it until you get no more dirt on your paper and then when you do the back side just stick it in press the contact in and do the same thing and you can assure that your relays will be in good and clean if you do it that way okay guys uh, Controls are clean, relays clean. I've got the uh, power connected back up, got it back on the outside antenna. Let's fire it up and see what we get. Now I'm going to leave the volume in the same uh, spot it was when I turned it off. So let's check it out and see now. We can actually turn this down now. And if you notice, we have S meter movement now. Well, that was a little 40 meter activity on uh, CW, and you can see the uh, S meter is working. So the receiver seems to be working real good now. And sometimes that's all it takes. It's just get in there and just clean some of the stuff. Like I said, this radio worked, and it sat for a long time. And when he tried it again, it did not work. Uh, we're not going to get into the transmitter right now. But I decided I would just do 
several videos on this radio and starting with getting the receiver working and then uh, on the next video we'll go in here and we'll start pulling out boards and cleaning and checking and inspecting and I'm probably going to order a recap kit and go ahead and recap this whole radio also so I'll go ahead and get that ordered up and uh, we can go on through this thing and and get it working like it's supposed to be because I think this is a good candidate for uh, restoration so here's just a uh, look inside of the radio and you can see it doesn't look bad there's minimum corrosion in it a little bit of uh, you know dust on it which is expected you know and it looks fairly well I'm looking down here on the uh, audio board and I'm not seeing no split capacitors them uh, mylar capacitors that normally uh, split open in there and that's due to moisture gets inside those uh, or gets on those mylar capacitors and they'll actually separate like a split pea but uh, I'm not seeing that on this board okay, that was just a little bit of uh, CW activity on 20 like I said it's working real good crystal oscillator on if the receiver's right we should have about an S9 we'll turn the uh, crystal oscillator on and you can see it's about 20 over and that should be about S9 if the receiver's working right so this showing me 20 over is telling me that the meter is off also so then this is when we would need a signal generator to just go in and uh, check the receive sensitivity alright so I'm feeding minus 77 dBm into the uh, FT101 and we can see we're showing about almost plus 20 on the uh, meter I'll pre-select this adjusted up correctly so yeah our meter is uh, out quite a bit so that should be somewhere around an S9 at about minus 73 dBm we're at minus 77 so yeah it's uh, the meter is definitely out just a bit but the receiver is working fantastic all right guys well there you go the uh, receiver in the 101 is working I went ahead and uh, put the covers back on it because I'm gonna go ahead and order the uh, capacitor kit so we can start tearing this thing down we'll take the case off get the front panel off get all this cleaned up all the knobs are dirty from sitting around so we need to get them clean we'll just take them off put them in the ultrasonic cleaner clean them up real good and uh, if there's any white paint missing off the knobs we'll put those back on there and get everything here cleaned up and lubricated uh, we'll be able to once the front panels off we'll be able to clean all these switches up make sure that they're working okay uh, like I say I've already did the uh, troubleshooting video on the uh, YC601 and that will be uploaded on Patreon and uh, okay and get the parts ordered up for that also so we can get this and you can see it just read zeros regardless of where you put the uh, the VFO and that was kind of a simple problem to figure out what it was but you can see we all the digits are here so that looks good no problem with the uh, diode matrix or the uh, the three <laughs> Nixie tube drivers they seem to be working fine it's just the uh, signal that goes into the uh, mixer stages 
there but it's not working any further from that so like I said that, that's an easy fix so one good thing guys if you notice you're not hearing a lot of background noise from the heating system uh, the last video I did I was running a propane heater that was very noisy since the heat was out went through a lot of trouble trying to get this heat going I ordered the uh, come to find out it was the defrost timer board that had been giving me a fit for so long I'm also looking at trying to upgrade some more stuff I'm looking for a good mic system that'll work with this Canon Vixia HFG10 I uh, went to a camera store yesterday and bought two different microphones and neither one of them worked with this Canon um, these cannons are so proprietary and the um, original mics that came from it was actually wireless and Bluetooth from the transmitter to the receiver I didn't really like that which they don't make them no more you can still buy them they're about 250 bucks for those microphones so I'm trying to find a good mic that's compatible with this camera and uh, you know, I bought some other mics and some mixer boards and trying it and just can't get the, a good sound out of it like I want. So I'm still looking for that. I'm also going to find a macro lens so I can get a little bit closer shot with this camera. Because if you get too close up on something, let's see. You see it's hunting and pecking. So that's about as close as you can get to something and uh, my camera is about two foot away from the radio at this point here and uh, I've got the telephone lens zoomed in as close as I can get without going out of focus so uh, yeah I want to find just a good screw on uh, time 10 macro lens that I can put on this camera. I looked at some at the camera store yesterday and uh, we're talking like 1700 bucks I told a guy look I'm not looking for that <laughs> that's as much as the camera cost um, I just wanted a good screw on macro lens which they had nothing like that in stock they did have uh, another used one that was uh, about the same version as the $1700 one for like 1200 but that's not what I'm looking um, I'm just looking just a little screw on macro lens to go on here and I found several online so I'm going to be looking at those and ordering some of them here in the next day or two alright guys uh, that's going to end this video like I say I'm, I'm still looking for the plain 101 and a B version if any of y'all run across those that's not working that you find and they have a good price on it you know let me know uh, you can always click on the show more tab follow the links to my website get my contact information I'm going to spend a lot more time now uh, picking up stuff like this you know mostly thanks to Patreon supporters I'm able to do that and uh, I'm going to limit incoming repairs because I just don't have time to uh, do that kind of stuff not working the full time job so uh, you know we'll limit it to picking up rigs like this going through them working on them reviewing some products this and that I had several companies that's been contacting me wanting me to review stuff and I've been holding back on it and, um, in fact Redivus wants me to review a mobile radio now so we'll probably go through that and do that but uh, yeah 101 plane 101 B uh, FR 101 that's in need of uh, some love. I'd love to find one of those to go with one of the three transmitters I got. So we'll be uh, looking for those. Uh, every now and then you'll get what's called a, a barn find that can be restored and uh, basically what this one was. But a uh, garage find. But <laughs> not a bad radio. It looks pretty good. I think cleaning it up, it does have some nicks and scuff. The, front bezel's a little faded on it but it doesn't look bad it looks like a good used radio and it's just what I want alright guys leave your comments down below love to hear from you and uh, hey we'll see you in the next one